possible cash four ticket generated by assuming some error level, like assume three. You, you have your list of 130 tickets and you send some poor victim out to the nearest drugstore with a long sheet of paper and okay, I want to buy one of these and one of this number and one of this number, but it's conceptually at least, it's a simple procedure and it shouldn't take that many minutes at the counter. Um, what are the chances of winning and is there a potential for profit? Well, cash four pays off at 5,000 to one, so if you expect to win, you can afford to invest in a considerable number of tickets up front. Um, and I realize I put part of the explanation after this table, which was not right. Um, the expected profit for any given uh, project design is the chance of winning times the $5,000 reward minus the upfront investment because you have to buy the tickets whether or not you win. And if you look at the expected profit, it turns out that your optimal strategy is the same whether you assume the the 60% pessimistic accuracy that I started off with or use the actual accuracy that came out in the experiment, uh, which of course we wouldn't know in advance. In any case, uh, either way, this green row, assuming there could be up to four errors, gives you the largest expected payoff under either assumption about the accuracy. Um, with the pessimistic a priori assumption, you'd have a 57% chance, chance of winning the lottery, and this expected profit, discounted for the chance of losing, is still over $2,000. Uh, with the, theoretic, with the ac observed accuracy, your theoretical chance of winning was uh, about 83%. In, uh, okay, I already covered that point. The best applied strategy for this experiment would have been to spend $626 buying one ticket for each possible sequence with up to four errors. Um, with the pessimistic assumption about the per trial accuracy, this still creates a bet definitely in your favor. In reality, in fact, there only turned out to be three errors. This, policy, this, this procedure would have won and netted uh, $4,374 per investment unit. And when I say per investment unit, there is, is no law saying that you can only buy one ticket for any given number. You may have to visit multiple stores. If you're walking in with your list of 600 numbers on a page, they'll probably get tired of your face after a while. But if you're confident enough in the procedure, you can do the investment multiple times. And uh, that uh, concludes the discussion of uh, how you can uh, get a practical ARV application even if you don't expect all of your data to be perfect on a complex target such as this long string of lottery numbers. Shifting gears slightly, people have been trying to apply ARV to various sorts of markets ever since Russ Targ in 1980, or maybe it was the late 70s. Wow. Um, now, again, we frequent, frequently these things show a decline effect and end up in, in less than 50% accuracy, and there is basically nothing you can do about that in terms of uh, trying to uh, adapt to it. You either need to work out some way of avoiding a decline or some other scheme to maintain some level of predictive accuracy. Uh, what I want to address here is how well can you do with the kind of very small predictive accuracy that is better than chance, but still has a high error rate. And I keep anticipating my uh, bullet points. Uh, so this, is a th this chart is taken from actual data on intraday price fluctuations for two different time slots in two different Asian futures markets. And the reason I'm using Asian markets is that for uh, complicated reasons, it was convenient for me to get the data. Um, the uh, trading was simulated by noting the price fluctuations, accounting for transaction fees, and what I'm calling here as biases in contract fulfillment, 
if you've ever actually worked with an electronic trading site, you uh, uh, will discover uh, that if you buy something, you're likely to end up paying more than the theoretical market price at the time. And if you sell something, you're liable to pull in a little bit less than what's officially supposed to be the market price at the moment you submitted the order. Um, so applying that, applying transaction fees, you end up with these curves. And in the Japanese markets, uh, at 55% accuracy, you're losing money, but you're earning an expected average profit in the simulation at, uh, if you're up to 60% accuracy. So there's a break-even point somewhere between 55 and 60. With the slightly different structure in the Hong Kong markets, all of those uh, accuracy levels generate at least a small profit. This graph, however, shows something slightly different. It shows your probability of showing any profit at all after one month of, of trading. Uh, you will notice that 50% of is here, and most of the curves are well below. Even these two curves, in terms of expected profitability, showed a positive result. But here they're showing less than a 50% chance of showing any profit. Now, how, how is that possible? Uh, what that means is that in a low accuracy ARV um, application, most time slots, months are convenient, uh, will show a modest net loss. You will make up a consistent long-term average profit from a minority of slots in which you earn a lot of money. Um, and, you know, okay, right, this is what I get for not clicking it often enough. Now, there's also a, uh, what I call a wipeout probability. This shows the chance of ending up at the end of the month with half or less of your initial investment pool. Now, this risk ranges from 31% to 11%, depending on the market, but it is clearly not negligible. Ergo, low accuracy ARV investing, even though it expects to show a profit in the long term, uh, you really need to pursue it only with a pool of risk capital in which you can afford temporary setbacks from which you later recover. Uh, now, finally, there's the question of, is better accuracy, the holy grail of ARV research, actually worth it? Um, I mean, most attempts to reduce displacement have uh, at, at best had limited success. Every approach, okay, I'm saying here all approaches for reducing displacement, I should apply a caveat, all approaches that I know of or have been able to think of will have the effect of reducing the rate at which predictions are made. My previous set of graphs assumed, for example, that on that one month of trading data, somebody was submitting a trade every single day the market was open. Um, this graph is a break-even curve. It shows the, uh, the trade-off between improving your accuracy and reducing the rate at which you make predictions. So, for instance, if you want to go from 55 to 60 percent, you can afford to lose half your predictions and you'll still be gaining at the same average rate. Uh, if you're in this area, you're better off with whatever you're doing to improve accuracy. But if you're down here, for instance, uh, the, your accuracy improvement actually impedes your performance. So, for instance, if, if you've got some magical recipe for filtering out uh, ARV trials that uh, lets you make 80% accurate predictions, but you have to throw away nine-tenths of your data, uh, you're better off not using it. So, to sum up, ARV applications may not be immediately obvious, in particular, applying error correcting procedures to complex targets may reveal unexpected potential for practical application. Um, until breakthroughs to higher accuracy occur, applications must plan to persevere through dry periods 
and need to pre-evaluate their venues for 